Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Huckabee, and welcome to Conversations with Nicole. In this episode, we are stepping into the world of craftsmanship with Walt Sprouse of the Charleston Woodworking School in Charleston, South Carolina. It's the only professional woodworking school in the state, and it is licensed by the South Carolina Commission on Higher Education and founded by master craftsman Sam Sprouse. So whether you're a woodworking enthusiast or someone seeking a career in this field, I hope you enjoy my conversation with Walt Sprouse. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. I am delighted to have as my guest today, Walt Sprouse with the Charleston Woodworking School in Charleston, South Carolina. Walt and I are friends. We go way back. And so, Walt, I'm glad to have you on the show. Well, thank you. And it's so good to see you again, too. And this is very exciting for us because not only do we have a good story to tell, but also we're so excited about the people that, that uh, follow you so closely, and there's lots of them. Uh, that way, they'll have a chance to know a little bit more about the Charleston Woodworking School. Absolutely. I agree 100%. So let's just go ahead and get started. This school is very special and very unique. It is the only professional woodworking school in the state of South Carolina, licensed by the South Carolina Commission on Higher Education, founded by your son, Master Craftsman Sam Sprouse, and it's acknowledged by the Veterans Administration. I mean, that's a lengthy resume right there. Well, it is. And whenever Sam uh, set the school up about 10 years ago, uh, one of the things that was very important, especially in the Charleston area, was the fact that there are a number of veterans uh, in the Charleston area and also uh, a lot of people that retire out of the military. Uh, and they're looking to uh, for their educational opportunities. So it was very important for Sam to make sure that uh, that we did all the things we needed to do to make sure we were approved by the Veterans Administration so that the school is able to take uh, educational benefits from the GI Bill and that they can go to school and uh, and learn this trade. I love that. So tell folks how the school came about. Sam had a different direction and then all of a sudden said, I think I want to go to a woodworking school, Dad. That's right. Yeah, he graduated. <laughs> Actually, he was part of the class of 2001 at, uh, at the University of South Carolina, which was the, the big year for, uh, for Carolina. And he graduated. Uh, and then uh, after he and Ann were married, uh, he had his degree. Uh, in sociology, and just did not know what he wanted to do. He worked for a bank uh, for a while, and then called one day and said, I, th I think I know what I want to do. And I said, what? He said, I'm going to be a professional woodworker. And I said, can you make a living at that? He said, I think so. Uh, I've been accepted at the best woodworking school in the world, and we're off to Scotland. So they moved to Scotland. He went to the Thomas Chippendale School of Fine Furniture, uh, just south of Haddington in East Lothian, Scotland, graduated at the top of his class, and came back to Charleston and started his woodworking business. Uh, the funny thing about that was that there were so many people that saw the quality and the detail of what he was doing with his furniture business, uh, and he was, he was doing well with that. They kept saying, I wish I knew how to do that. And so he and I talked and uh, decided that it would be a smart thing to take some students and, um, and model the Charleston Woodworking School after the school he went to in, in Scotland. So, um, so that's how everything got started. And here it is 10 years later, and it's, uh, it's going great. It's thriving. So for folks that maybe aren't quite sure how a woodworking school works, tell them about the Charleston Woodworking School. Well, it is a one-year course. Uh, we like to use the phrase, uh, a great career in one year. The good thing about the woodworking school is that it does start in September of every year, and the classes run until the following June. Uh the other thing that is interesting is that we usually take a maximum of only 15 students per year. 
And that allows uh, Sam and and Mary and and Peter and uh, and Joseph and all the instructors at the school to give some really good one on one training uh, because you're working with your hands and uh, and one of the things you have to know a lot about a little bit is math. You have to yeah. figure out things and measure things and. Uh, and so, um, so that's that's sort of an interesting uh, fact about woodworking school. They start off rather easily, talking obviously about safety, about sharpening, and about different types of wood and finishes and stuff. And then the students uh, are then encouraged to design some projects of what they want to do. Uh, and so they design either. We've had students that design roll top desk. They design king size bed headboards and footboards. They designed uh, desk and chairs and, uh, and just a variety of different things. And so once they decide their project, and then they draw it out, they measure it, they know what they want to do, they want to know what kind of finish they want on it, they want to know what kind of wood they're going to use. Then they get busy and they start building their projects. I love that. You mentioned the roll bag desk. Um, that particular student really found a niche there. Tell us his story. He really did. He was from New Jersey, and uh, and he was maybe, I think, about 20, uh, was not uh, was not in the military. And so he, uh, he applied and was accepted, and he came down from New Jersey. And, of course, we helped him with you know, his housing uh, needs and, and, and various things. And uh, he decided that he wanted to uh, to build this really nice roll top desk. I'm trying to see if I have a photo of it here. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's right him. Here. And that's his roll top desk. That's sort of a small one that he made right there because he wanted to make one small. Yes. And um, so uh, he did that and graduated, went back to uh, New Jersey and opened up his furniture business and told people that this was his project. They decided that uh, it would be a good idea to maybe push the fact that they make roll top desks because you can't you can't find any roll top desk anymore. So uh, so that's what he's doing and he's doing quite well with that. Uh, and I talked to him oh, about a month or so ago. He was telling me about his woodworking business. I think so far uh, during the past ten years, the woodworking school has um, has spawned about thirty one woodworking businesses all up and down the eastern United States, and so that's wow. uh, that's very important to us, and we follow up you know, with them you know, often. Well, it's interesting you would say that because when Sam said, I think I can make a living doing this, certainly he has. And your students are thriving. And that's so important. And this is a niche. This is very different. And so it's beautiful to see that not everyone goes has to go to a four year college, you know, and get a business degree with that. There are options today like this. And that's beautiful. It really is because one of the things that the, the nationwide conversation obviously is about is student debt. And you, you see a lot of students that go to a four-year college. There's nothing wrong with that if this is the, the course of study that they want to do. Um, but in many cases, they end up borrowing money and they get out of school. They have a degree. They start to uh, look for a job and then they're hit with two hundred and twenty or $230,000 of of student college debt that they have to pay off. Um, the good thing about the woodworking school is the fact that not only is the uh, tuition uh, very reasonable, it's, it's in the 20s uh, for the year, but it's very easily, to, you don't have a whole lot of college debt either if you have to borrow that. And uh, and the young man in New Jersey, I think, borrowed the money from his parents, and I think he said he paid it back to them in eight months. So he was debt free. And then on top of that, he had started his own business. That's what we encourage the students to do is to start their own business. And there's several in and around the Charleston area um, that are graduates of the uh, Charleston Woodworking School. Uh, one of the things that we have as part of our curriculum is that we bring in the Small Business Administration to talk to the students on how to set their business up. 
how to go to the bank, what kind of questions to ask the banking officers, uh, and talk to them about loans and about payments and about taxes and about hiring and, and all the things that you need to know about how to set up a business. So That's this so is so important. It really is. And and the good thing about that is like you mentioned about the, the niche that we have right here, uh, it is a, a trend. I think, uh, in certain parts of the United States, especially in South Carolina, to go to a trade school and learn that trade, whether it's anything, you know, but in our case, woodworking. And in this way, you can have a really good career in one year. You own your own business. You're your own boss. And you can decide how you want that uh, business to grow in the future. Absolutely. And one thing that's happening at the Charleston Woodworking School is you're actually expanding with your property there to actually help these students when they're coming out, if they're looking for a place to set up their business. That's right. We are in the process. Of, we're just getting started on it right now. As you know, Charleston is just booming, booming. Uh, commercially. <laughs> and it's very difficult to find rentable commercial space and so that's one of the things that uh, if there is a little bit of a problem about locating in Charleston is trying to find some space. And, of course, the businesses start off small. So we do have uh, a building on our property there that we're getting ready to renovate. And we uh, plan on having four 1,000 square foot uh, parts of this building that would be flex space so that we can yeah. uh, rent that to graduates or anybody else if someone's in plumbing supplies you know we'll run it for them but we're going to focus on our graduates first to uh, make sure that they use this chances are what we feel is that they will go in maybe to a thousand square feet into our flex space and then they will grow their business enough and we would be very very happy when they they call us and say we're moving yes. because we need more space that's right I love that. And I am sure it's very rewarding to see the students come and take this, you know, the, the, go to school there and then to see them move on and do so well. And then I suspect as you, walking through Charleston, you might see some of their works along the way at different businesses that they already have set up. I'm sure that's very rewarding for Sam and all the others that are instructing them. And of course, for you. It really is. Uh, over in Mount Pleasant, uh, we have a graduate, and uh, basically what she makes are shaker chairs. They're like ladder-back chairs. She does a lot of carving on it, and that has the seat that is that is sort of a woven blue and white checkerboard-looking uh, uh, thing. But this is, this is what she wanted to do. She wanted to focus on making those. So we get to, to see her uh, periodically. Uh, whenever we have graduation in June, uh, of course, all the graduates are invited. Uh, many of them come back for graduation. And it's very inspiring to know that you have these graduates that have just finished the course. And you see them talking to former graduates and talking to them about their business and how well they are doing in their business. And, uh, and that is very rewarding. Absolutely. And for those that take uh, come to school there, not only do they make their own furniture, but they also help with repairs. And that's a big deal these days. People that can actually repair the older furniture from long ago, correct? Exactly. It's, it's, it's quite an art and it, it is art. Uh, whenever uh, we have former students, and Sam has done a lot of this too, uh, in his woodworking business, uh, to take uh, an antique, for instance, something that has been in somebody's family for 200 years, and somehow it's damaged for whatever reason. And then to have that skill that the students learn at the Charleston Woodworking School to know that if there is a broken leg on a hand-carved mahogany table, that they can remove that leg, they can put a new uh, they hand carve the new leg, install it, stain it. Then, of course, they have to distress it to make it look like the rest of the antique uh, to whatever degree that they need to. And um, and you can't, you can't tell which uh, which has been damaged because they've done such a wonderful job. You really cannot tell. But 
that is something where everybody that that watches uh, our discussion here will say, yes, you know, Aunt Mary had that cable, and I wish we knew someone that could fix that. Yeah. Uh, right. And, of course, what we can do is that, uh, have someone to get in touch with us at the Ward Working School in Charleston. And, uh, and you know, we'll be glad to refer them to any number of graduates uh, that we have. I was thinking, too, many students come in and they already have a talent for this. It's something they've enjoyed or they're, they're just they're naturally drawn to wanting to create beautiful pieces from wood. Some students think, I just might enjoy that and I want to go learn. Both are, are extremely valuable to the program, but it, it opens a door for new opportunities for someone who may not know what they want to do. Talk about that. That's very true because uh, many times we have uh, applicants that, uh, that apply to the Charleston Woodworking School. And in the application, and of course, the application is online at www.charlestonwoodworkingschool.com. The application is there. And many times uh, in the application, we'll, re, uh, we'll require not only your basic information, but also why you want to attend the school, what kind of past experience that you've had. And then if you have made some things, there's uh, places there where you can submit photographs of what you've uh, done in the past. You don't have to have that knowledge or previous work in woodworking to uh, to apply and be accepted at the woodworking school because like you said many uh, of the applicants they say i really don't know what i want to do i think i can do this i'm pretty sure i can do this uh so this is the path that i want to take and so uh it's very interesting the ones that really have no experience they want to absorb all this knowledge just like a sponge. Those people that do have a lot of knowledge, they also come in knowing that maybe the way they used to do something, maybe it's not exactly <laughs> the best way to do it. Yeah. Uh, so they get to learn uh, the proper way to, uh, uh, to finish their projects. That's called education. <laughs> exactly. Which is why we have a school for it. I just love it. I think that this is amazing that in South Carolina, that you are the only licensed professional woodworking school. What what a beautiful thing that we are able to have that for our state. And so I'm excited that we've been able to talk about the Charleston Woodworking School and all that it offers. So remind folks again how they can apply, how they can learn more about it, and actually also where you're located physically in case someone wanted to come check it out if they were in the Charleston area. Well, you you mentioned too about you know being the only professional woodworking school in South Carolina. Uh, one thing that thrilled us a, a lot was the University of South Carolina Alumni Magazine a couple of years ago did a story about Sam uh, and about his journey at uh, at Carolina and then his woodworking business. Now, uh, the name of the article was entitled uh, "An Office with a View." because the woodworking school is located at 2338 Ashley River Road in yeah. Charleston. Uh, if anybody's familiar with Ashley River Road, that's the uh, that's the two-lane road from Charleston to Somerville. That's the one with all the trees and all the moss hanging yeah. over the road. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful location. We back up to a marsh, and so it's just a, a, a beautiful location. But it is a brand-new building. Uh, and it is located again at 2338 Ashley River Road in Charleston. Uh, and it's very close to uh, apartments, it's close to shopping, it's close to uh, you know, Interstate 526. So it's easy to get there, it's easy to, um, to get any place in, in Charleston there. But as far as the application, once again, the application is online. Uh, and I would invite everyone to go online to take a look at the website. Uh, there's a lot of information there with photographs and information about the school values, about the education, about the calendar. All, all you need to know is there. Again, that's at www.charlestonwoodworkingschool.com. And, uh, and our telephone number is area code 843-513-3313. That's, uh, that's my number. And Sam's is area code 843-513-3042. That's awesome. I 
and just delighted to be able to share uh, with my audience all that's happening at the Charleston Woodworking School. It sounds lovely. If I'm ever in the Charleston area, I'm going to try to see if I can go take a look at it myself because uh, seeing it in person would be wonderful knowing all that we've talked about today and and what it's doing for uh, the students and changing lives and just making Charleston even more richer in culture than it already is, right? It really is. And it's and once again, it's quite a unique school. And again, the only one in South Carolina, the only professional woodworking school in South Carolina uh, that offers such detail and such uh, high quality, but also with that opportunity to start your own business and uh, and control your own destiny. And this is something that just thrills us a great deal that, that we know that there's such a success rate uh, with our graduates. And again, we only take 15 students per year. So uh, my suggestion would be is if you're thinking about it, don't hesitate. Uh, make sure you go online and fill out that application and get that in as soon as possible. Great advice. Well, thank you so much for being my guest today. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Well, thank you so much. It is so good to see you again. And so uh, thank you. And I really do appreciate the opportunity to uh, provide a little bit of information uh, about what we feel is uh, now uh, the best woodworking school in the world. Which is I love it. Woodworking school. Yes, the best in the world now. Absolutely. The pleasure has been all mine. I do appreciate your time today. Again, thanks. And that, absolutely. And that will do it for this edition of Conversations with Nicole. Until I see you again, I hope you have a great day.